Okay, so we have a functioning blog section. We've got a good looking starter template here for our website. This is a kind of our homepage. We've got short codes in there. We've got quite a lot of theme features built in and we've learned how to build all this stuff pretty much from scratch. Okay, so now let's change this menu so that it kind of fits with the pages that we have. So I'm gonna go over to my admin section and I'm gonna go over to appearance and then menus. And then in here, I'm gonna get rid of the sample page that WordPress generates by default when we install. And I'm gonna get rid of this random blog post in the menu. And instead I'm gonna put in the FAQ page and I'm also gonna add the blog page. So I'm just gonna click add to menu right there. And I'm gonna put the blog last. So you can kind of drag and drop like that. Now I'm gonna hit save over here. And then if I go back and I refresh there we go, now we have all of our pages in there. We've got our About Us page. This is a page where you can kind of fill out and put in information about your company or your brand. This is our FAQ page. It's got the slim format. You could have like a question answer format and just kind of repeat that over and over. And then we've got our blog page over here where we can kind of click on individual blog posts and we have comments built in we have pagination for long blog posts like this one called the third blog post and so on. So we've got a pretty complete site at this point. And I'd mentioned one other thing. I'd mentioned this idea of hierarchy. So we know that page home, this file that we created is for our homepage. We designated that as our homepage template. And it's got the jumbotron. It's got that call out. So this, when we go to home over here, we know that that's using page-home. We also have page slim for our FAQ page. We've got page as our default template. The about us page is using that one. We've got single when we're looking at individual blog posts. So when I go over here and I click on blog and then click on one of these, this is our single template with the sidebar built in. And we also have this index page here. So where is that being used? That's being used when I go over here and I click on blog itself. Okay, I designated this as our posts page. This is being used, uh, this is using the index template. And if you're curious about how WordPress decides when to use which template, there is a kind of hierarchy to this. So if I search template hierarchy, And, and also maybe add the word WordPress. If I search those three words in Google, I get this link over here. And it's at developer.wordpress.org forward slash themes. And in here, there is a kind of hierarchy and they give you this image that you can look at. And this is really hard to see, but you know, we talked about all the different types of templates that are, there are. You know, there's the single, there's the page, there's archive, author. And if you look to the right, they all kind of fall back to index. And if you remember, we started out with just one file in there, basically one template file, and it was this index.php file and our style sheet. That's it. So this is the fallback. This will always kind of be your fallback, and that's why WordPress says at a bare minimum you need that index page. Okay, and then here's our page right over here. This page.php, we talked about home, we talked about 404, and just some of the other ones. So there's a lot of different templates, but if you look at this and kind of study this diagram, I know it's a lot of content in one picture, but it explains how WordPress makes its decisions on which template to pull out. And just remember that index.php is always the final fallback. It'll be the last page that you kind of fall back on. And in this case, the blog page is using that. The reason why that's happening is if we go over here to settings and then reading, we set this posts page to be blog. And so that's our blog index page, which in this case is index.php. So just to recap, if I go back over here, I hit back. We're at this developer.wordpress 
org website over here, they have this theme handbook. And you can get to this website by going to developer.wordpress.org forward slash themes. And if you kind of cut the rest of that out and just went to that website, you'd get to this theme handbook page. And that's where I got this hierarchy kind of chart. And if you click on this page, you can kind of see they talk about all the possible templates that you can kind of be using. There's the category template. There is the home page template, the front page template. And this is an excellent website that really goes into a lot of detail about all the capabilities when you're building out themes. There's the tag template, taxonomy template. So there's quite a bit of other templates that you can really build out. What we've built out is the core essentials. Uh, there's a 404 template if you run into an error when you're on your website. So there's a lot of information here. Now, at the time of this filming of this tutorial, this website is kind of incomplete. They're still building it out. So you'll have to refer to the Codex website. You can just search Codex, WordPress, and maybe add like theme development to your search. So if you search something like that, you'll get to their Codex website. And this is kind of more of their historic documentation. This is where they've documented a lot of the WordPress features. And you can see, again, they've got the same list of uh, template files. And here's the list of them. So there's, as you can see, kind of home, single, page. We've made some of these from scratch ourselves. Archive, search. And you can kind of learn about them from this codex. Now, don't worry, I know I've pointed you to the WordPress documentation sites many times. At the end of this, I'm going to show you an exhaustive list of where to go and exactly which web pages to kind of look at um, when you're kind of looking for developing out themes and such.